Good day students! Welcome back to Maestring Techie YouTube channel! Be glad because we are now in the week 6 of grade 9 science quarter 2 lesson. This week's topic is all about organic compounds. Check out our learning objectives. At the end of this video lesson, you will be able to identify and differentiate organic and inorganic compounds. Recognize the general classes and uses of organic compounds and give the importance of organic compounds. So, what are you waiting for? Keep on watching! Let us have a very short activity. Maestrang Teki bought some items from a grocery store. Please help her to sort all the organic items and put it inside the basket. Which of the following are organic? We have carrots. That's right. We also have eggs. What else? Bananas. That is right. Corns. And we have fresh milk. That is right, class. You did great. In agriculture, we describe organic foods that are raised under specific conditions such as no antibiotics or no pesticides and fertilizers were used. In chemistry, the term organic describes chemical compounds that contain carbon and other elements such as hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, or phosphorus. If we are going to recall, when two or more elements are combined together, it is called compounds. Compounds can be classified into two main groups. Organic compounds that contain carbon and usually bonded to hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, and phosphorus. And the second one is the inorganic compounds while most of it do not contain carbon atom in them. Let us take a look at the examples of organic compounds. We have glucose or sugar that we use in our food. Alcohol that we use especially nowadays in the midst of pandemic. Let's make it a habit to sanitize our hands. And soap to wash our hands to prevent viruses in entering our body. All of this contain carbon. On the other hand, we have inorganic compounds. Examples? Water or H2O. Our bodies are composed of mostly water and it is necessary for us to survive. However, water is an example of inorganic compounds because it does not contain both carbon and hydrogen and it was not formed by a living organism. Next example is table salt or sodium chloride that we usually see in our kitchen. Another one is carbon dioxide. Even though it has a carbon atom, it is considered inorganic compound because it does not contain both carbon and hydrogen. A while ago, we knew that organic compounds are called organic because they are associated with living organisms. These molecules form the basis for life and are studied in great detail in the chemistry disciplines of organic chemistry and biochemistry. Most of the foodstuffs that we consume every day, such as sugar, fats, starch, vinegar, and etc. are basically organic compounds. Even though the organic compounds have been known to man since prehistoric times, their study practically began from the 18th century. The term organic compound was coined by Jans Jacob Berzelius in the year 1807. There are four main types or classes of organic compounds found in all living organisms. These are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. In addition, there are other organic compounds that may be found in or produced by some organisms. All organic compounds contain carbon, usually bonded to 
hydrogen. Let's take a closer look at the key types of organic compounds and see examples of these important molecules. Let us explore more about these compounds. Let us start with the most familiar one which is carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are organic compounds made up of elements such as carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. One example of carbohydrates is glucose or blood sugar and its chemical formula is C6H12O6. As you can see, it only has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Another thing that you can notice if you will look at the chemical formula, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is 12 is to 6. Simplifying it, the ratio of hydrogen atoms to oxygen atoms in carbohydrate molecules is 2 is to 1. Now, let us have the uses of carbohydrates in organisms. Carbohydrates is used as the main or primary energy source, especially in humans. Also, it can make up cell structures. In addition, they are also used as stored energy in plants. From lots of vegetables that we eat, we are actually eating their stored energy in the form of starch, like potatoes and grains. Carbohydrates are classified according to how many subunits they contain. Simple carbohydrates are called sugar. A sugar made of one unit is called monosaccharide. Our example a while ago, which is glucose or blood sugar, is a monosaccharide. Another one is fructose. Have you heard of it before? It is from fruits. Double the monosaccharide, we have disaccharide where two units are joined together. Examples are maltose and sucrose. Lastly, we have polysaccharide. From the word itself, poly, it means two or more. Examples are starch, that is the stored energy in plants. Glycogen is a human or animal's reserve stored in our liver and muscles and cellulose that makes up cell wall in plants. That is all for carbohydrates. Next is lipids. Lipids are also made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just like carbohydrates. Their difference is when you look at the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, it is greater than 2 is to 1. The uses of lipids include storing energy and acting as structural components of cell membranes that helps it become flexible and fluid-like. Also, it serves as signal molecules to help cells communicate with each other. And another one is the coating on the lips which is called cuticle that makes them waterproof and protects them from elements. The three major groups of lipids are Triglycerides. It includes fats, oil, and wax. Second is steroids and phospholipids. Let's take a quick look at fatty acids. Fatty acids can be either saturated or unsaturated. A fatty acid that has a single band only is called saturated fatty acid. Unsaturated fatty acids has one or more double bonds, as shown in your screen right now. In most human health situations, the consumption of unsaturated fats is preferred to the consumption of saturated fats. Saturated fats are solid at room temperature and are bad for you, while unsaturated fats are liquid at room temperature and are better for you. Now, let us proceed to our third, and that is proteins. When we hear proteins, many people think of muscles. But there are other things that proteins make in our body besides muscles. Proteins consist of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and the new element added is nitrogen. Proteins consist of chains of amino acids called peptides. A protein may be made from a single polypeptide chain or may have a more complex structure 
where polypeptide subunits pack together to form a unit. Remember, some proteins contain other atoms such as sulfur, phosphorus, iron, copper, and magnesium. Proteins serve many functions in cells. The uses of proteins in our body is, first, cellular structures. One of the cellular structures out of the many is our hair. Next, control substances in and out of the cell. Proteins are useful for receptors and transport channels. And lastly, is for our immunity. It can help us fight diseases with antibodies that are made of proteins. Now, let us take a look of the different examples of proteins. We have hemoglobin in our blood, collagen, and insulin. We also have keratin, myoglobin, and fibrin. Wow! Now, let us proceed to the last type of organic compound that we are going to discuss, and that is nucleic acids. This may be a new word that some of you haven't ever heard before, but I'm sure you'll recognize them after we discuss this. The elements found in nucleic acids are, of course, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen just like protein, and now we have a new one, that is P for Phosphorus. The phosphorus comes in because the building blocks of nucleic acids are called nucleotides. Nucleotides are composed of E, which is our phosphate group, attached to a sugar, which varies depending on what type of nucleic acid you're using. And then we have nitrogenous or nitrogen base. And there are five different bases that can be used. Nucleic acids are the molecules in our cells that direct and store information for reproduction and cellular growth. There are two types of nucleic acids. The first one is RNA, which stands for ribonucleic acid. The ribo stands for the type of sugar that is used, which in this case is called ribose. RNA has only one single strand, as shown in your screen right now. The second type of nucleic acids is DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Can you repeat after me, class? Deoxyribonucleic acid. The deoxyribo is for the sugar that's used, and in this case, it is the deoxyribose. In DNA, Instead of having one strand of nucleotides, it's actually a mirror image almost on the opposite side, and it is called the double-stranded helix, which it twists on itself. The DNA carries the genetic information for the cells. Sections of a DNA molecule called genes contain the information to make a protein. DNA serves two main functions. Molecules of DNA can produce other DNA molecules and RNA molecules. RNA molecules are directly responsible for synthesis of proteins. And that is all for the four types of organic compounds. For our conclusion, organic compounds are important because all living organisms contain carbon. They are the basic components of many of the cycles that drive the Earth. And that is it for our lesson this week. I hope this brings enlightenment in our topic, Organic Compounds. Please don't be shy to comment down your questions. And if this video helped you, do not forget to click the like, share, and subscribe button. And to keep you updated for future videos, please turn on the bell button. Thank you so much for watching and see you on my next one. Bye!